Good afternoon. Today I'm going to show you about a new product that Artwork has developed called Wafer Map Converter. The purpose of this product is to read what we call wafer maps, which are text files that describe the relative position of die on a wafer, and convert them either to a standard SIMP format or to a GDS2 layout or to an AutoCAD DXF layout. Now what you'll find when you get a wafer map is that there's not a single format that all of the foundries use. Some foundries use the standard SIMF, which is supported, of course, but other foundries have kind of created their own syntax. It's a pain to have to take that data and bring it into a spreadsheet, modify it till it matches, say, SIMF, and then run it through a converter. We've collected various different formats that we've run across, and we've written a series of different parsers for these formats that match all the ones that we currently have seen. And, of course, we can add more parsers as additional formats become known to us. Well, the way the program works is pretty simple. You pick a file you want to import. In this case, I'm going to use the XML example. We'll just go here and grab the XML, open it, and it gets scanned, and you can see that if it can find information, it'll display it. For example, it says the die size here, how many rows and columns, the location of the flat, and what the input units are. On the output side, you can specify some kind of base name. I'll just call it XML. And you can also specify an output directory. And then you can tell the program what kind of output you want. In this case, I'm going to simply produce GDS2. And I want my GDS2 in units of micron. There are some additional things we can put in the output. One of them would be a wafer diameter. I'm going to put in a 200 millimeter wafer, but because I'm in units of microns, I'm writing 200,000, and I'm putting in a margin of 3,000. I also want some crosshairs to be drawn. Once I've got everything prepared here, I click on Convert, and you can see it happens instantaneously. Now I'm going to open the GDS2 file. So I've opened it in Artworks GDS2 Viewer Quick View. You can see that we've created a number of layers. Let's turn them all off and turn them on one at a time. The first layer holds the wafer diameter and the margin. Then the second layer holds the crosshairs. This is zero, 00 on the wafer. Each cell that it finds gets its own layer. So that's a cell called cell 1, and that's a cell called cell X, and then any empty cells are also generated. This is what our output is. There's a few other things that you can notice here. One is that in this case the flat is on the left side, and we really like to work with the flat on the bottom. But one of the things that we could do is to run the translation again, and this time rotate it got the same data I've simply put a counterclock rotation of 270 which should get it around to the bottom and I'll convert it again and this time when I open it now I have the flat on the bottom uh, the other feature is to be able to translate the data although we auto center the data based on the extents of the die that's not necessarily where the die are placed on the wafer most cases there's a small amount of offset when they run the uh, reticle Normally the factory will give you that value. If you have that value, you can enter it, and then you'll get the precise positioning of the devices. And let's look at the AutoCAD output. To produce AutoCAD, we'll check the DXF block. And in this example, if I'm doing a documentation, I'd like to have my units in millimeters, so I'll leave that there. And notice that this changed to 203. Keep the rotation. All i got to do now is click Convert. So let's open this in AutoCAD and see what we have. File, open, and there's our XML DXF. We see our device, so let's have a look at the layers. We have the same layer set up. This layer 4 is our null die. Turn that off, they go away. And then layer 2 appears to be our special die, so get rid of those. We have our product die, and we have our outlines. You can see that this is in units of millimeters, minus 95 to plus 95. That gives you a 200 millimeter diameter. If you zoom in, you can see each cell and its label. This is currently one big block, which makes it easy to shift around if you need to, called matrix, and you could, of course, explode that block and then access the individual devices themselves. So now you've basically seen how the program can take a non-standard wafer map, convert it into either GDS2 or DXF. I didn't show that it can do SIMF, but in fact it can. It can also apply both a rotation and a translation as needed to properly position the data on the wafer. Once you have this, you have basically a template for your mask of where all your RDL circuits are going to go. Thank you.